Um, the talk here today is about uh, an explicit channel estimation technique that we developed for frequency selective wideband millimeter systems under hardware constraints. This is a joint work with Dr. Al Khadib and Professor Robert Heath from the University of Texas Austin and Professor Nuria Gonzalez Pelches from the University of Vigo, Spain. So, as we know, millimeter wave and massive MIMO systems are going to be the key ingredients of uh, next generation 5G systems. And both of these technologies uh, use large antenna arrays at the transmitter and the receiver to leverage beamforming gain and to realize the large data arrays that are promised by these technologies. Now, given that the number of antennas is large, the MIMO channel matrix would also be of larger dimension and hence complicates the channel estimation. Moreover, it also means that we have to develop uh, low overhead estimation techniques to get these channel state information. And this is especially critical for designing efficient precoder and combiner for both millimeter wave MIMO and millimeter wave massive MIMO systems. Note that for millimeter wave MIMO systems in particular, this is further complicated due to uh, specific hardware constraints. So to give a brief overview of the hardware constraints, let us look at uh, one of the main or some of the few architectures that's considered for millimeter wave. Firstly, a uh, conventional architecture is that of analog beam forming where a single RF chain is used at both the transmitter and the receiver and this chain actually drives a set of phased arrays which is applied to the entire bandwidth of the system to steer the signal that signal that is transmitted and received. So in this context, the channel estimation essentially means that we have to get the best direction to point the Rx and uh, Tx beamforming directions. But however, the downside is that uh, analog beamforming architecture is limited to single stream and can support only single stream MIMO. Now to, to multi-stream MIMO, uh, we, have to we would have to rule out the fully digital MIMO architecture because it's not uh, feasible in the conventional sense for millimeter wave due to power constraints. So this essentially rules out several digital channel estimation techniques that's been available in the literature. Uh, another option is to mix a fully digital MIMO architecture along with low resolution mixed circuit uh, components for each antenna array. We don't consider that in this uh, talk here, but that's a uh, direction for future research. Instead, we focus on hybrid precoding architecture and hybrid combining architecture, where the number of RF chains, that is the number of DC, the DACs and the ADCs is far fewer than the number of uh, physical antenna elements. Now, uh, it's been, it's known that hybrid precoding architectures, hybrid architectures can support multi-stream and a multi-user MIMO at millimeter wave. And importantly, for doing channel estimation, it gives a good trade-off between multi-stream beam training uh, approaches in terms of the training overhead that's incurred. Also notice that because it is a uh, hybrid, it can circumvent the low link SNR that is um, possible when we don't have an analog processing block. However, that also means that we don't have direct access to the antenna ports and also that the system has to operate on the large bandwidth which essentially makes the system frequency selective. Uh, given, given this, however, the channel estimates derived from hybrid architecture based systems can serve as an alternative to beam training and it can serve uh, multi-stream communication as well. So to summarize uh, prior work, there has been work on beam training, hierarchical beam training in particular, which used analog architectures and therein explicit channel estimation is uh, avoided and the goal is to get the best angle of arrival and angle of direction to point the transmission beams. And it also works for wideband channels, but the downside is that it can support only single stream to get multi-stream um, communication, sparsity-based channel estimation techniques have been uh, proposed and um, it works for any architecture. 
However, most prior work concentrated on narrow band ch narrow channel models and extension to wide band frequency selective uh, systems um, is, re is reasonably fresh area of research and also some of the prior work assumed over idealistic setting which need not be the case. So our contribution is to uh, propose a wide band frequency selective millimeter wave channel estimation technique wherein we uh, leverage a particular sparse formulation in the time domain so that it is useful for single carrier millimeter wave systems. Note that single carrier is a potential um, carrier technology for millimeter wave next generation systems. And the formulation in particular incorporates the hardware constraints in the system in the form of the size of the frame, the composition of the frame, the frame structure, the finite bandwidth used for different, used by the different band limiting blocks in the transceiver chains, and also the hybrid architecture in the system. And importantly, this works for both MIMO as well as massive MIMO wideband millimeter wave systems. So speaking of the wideband millimeter wave system, uh, we model the channel as a geometric channel using a geometric channel model consisting of a capital L number of paths and each path is characterized by a complex gain alpha, a time of arrival tau, of angle of departure phi and angle of arrival, sorry, angle of departure theta and angle of arrival phi. And since this is a wideband frequency selective channel, the effective baseband channel is assumed to have NC paths so that each of the uh, MIMO channel metrics for corresponding to each uh, tap index D can be decomposed as uh, consisting of these L paths in the system. Now, note, now the key idea of our proposed channel estimation uh, approach is to liberate the sparsity in the angular domain as well as in the time domain, noticing that the channel essentially, in the channel essentially, only these uh, four parameters characterize each path and the number of paths L is much smaller than the number of transmit and the receive antennas. So the key idea of the proposed channel training is as follows. So we transmit a frame, a, a sequence of frame during the channel estimation phase and each frame is, um, during the transmission of each frame, we fix the RF recorder and combiner that is used for transmission and reception. And these RF recorders and combiners are, are generated using, uh, using um, phase angles from a finite set but uniformly at random from a finite set of quantized angles. So each of these recorders and combiners need not necessarily focus the energy in a given very narrow bin of uh, angle of departure and angle of arrival but rather be wider beams but then we are transmitting several frames and combining all these uh, frames together at the receiver to estimate the explicit channel. So essentially we are exp uh, estimating the angle of arrival and departure and the time of arrival and thereby recovering the channel. So that is the key idea. So the each frame is con assumed to consist of uh, training data of length n and uh, is prefixed with zeros of length at most the channel tap length. So the idea of using this uh, zero padding is so that from one training frame to the next, we could easily switch the precoders and combiners that is used so that no data loss is incurred at the frame edges. So this is a critical point that needs to be taken, uh, that has to be noted because, because these are out of precoders and combiner, there could be potential um, finite non-zero switching time from one configuration to the other. So that padding with zeros essentially means you're not transmitting anything and you don't lose anything during that time. So that the received frame during the mth training um, stage could be decomposed in this form equation here. But notice that all these uh, channel matrices are still entangled and our task and the unknown in particular actually is this uh, matrix here. So to expose that, we first 
vectorize this equation so that the unknown quantity h is this unknown vector here which uh, can be simplified into uh, a matrix product consisting of the array response vectors evaluated at the actual angles of arrival and departure. So AT and AR are the array response vectors evaluated at the actual angles and of arrival and departure. And the uh, quantities here capture both the time of arrival and as well as the channel gain corresponding to the L paths. So first we exploit the sparsity in the angular domain whereby we um, assume that we construct a dictionary of a much larger size say GR and GT for the receiver and the transmitter respectively such that the product GRGT is much much larger than the actual size L so that uh, each of these vectorized version of the matrix has a sparse representation in terms of this sparse vector X. So this can be pre-computed at the receiver. Next we liberate the uh, the sparsity, the group sparsity in the time domain by using the pulse shaping uh, filter knowledge, filter response knowledge that we have in the receiver. For this we assume that we sample the pulse shaping filter and evaluate its response at every tab uh, element D assuming that the, the pulse arrived at the index N and this delay grid size is assumed to be much much larger than the actual tap length of the channel. So that effectively the received signal can be uh, represented in this form in terms of the, uh, the spatial domain dictionary and the delay domain dictionary. Now the key takeaway here is that once we write it in this form and we assume that the, con the grid error due to quantization is minimal, the unknown quantity X is of size GR, GT, GC, all of these parameters can be controlled and designed accordingly and it is, has exactly L non-zero entries. So uh, estimating each of these non-zero elements of X corresponds to a particular angle of arrival, a particular angle of departure and a particular time of arrival. So given that all these uh, measurement metrics phi defined here, which again depends on the training data and the beamforming vectors that we use for that state. So given that these need not be like na really narrow beams, what we do is collect several such measurements. So for example, if we have m such, if we do m such training stages, and for each of these m stages, we assume that the channel um, statistics do not change then stacking all these measurements results in this uh, linear equation of this form where uh, the task is to estimate this quantity x which is sparse. So we could use um, conventional sparsity, sparse recovery based techniques to estimate the, the support set of x and then plug it, back, plug it back into this equation and get the gains of these x, uh, the, the non-zero values the non-zero values of this x which corresponds to the gain. So that we do using uh, least square or minimum mean square error for example. Now this formulation for simplicity we have shown for a single transmit uh, RF chain used to the transmitter and the receiver. This extends directly to uh, multiple RF chains as well. So and importantly um, the key idea here is that both the dictionary in the time domain, in the delay domain, uh, gamma and the dictionary in the, uh, angle, uh, the angle domain, both can be controlled and the grid size can be made as fine as needed to minimize the quantization error. So to show some simulation results, we plot here the normalized mean square error which is defined by the equation here which essentially captures how far away the estimated channel is from the actual channel. For the case when there are 32 transmit antennas and 32 receive antennas, we assume a ULA uh, uniform linear array response vector. The dictionary is constructed using these parameters. We assumed an orthogonal matching pursuit for the sparse recovery and for estimating the channel gain we use the D square approach. So the two plots here, the solid curve shows the case where the actual channel is a 
it's uniform random in 0 to pi, whereas the dictionary, if you remember, is drawn from a grid of fixed size. So there is some loss due to this quantization error, and that is inc more uh, prominent when the SNR levels are higher. On the other hand, on the other extreme, we have the case where the angle of arrival and departure are on the actual grid values, in which case the, the error is much uh, lower, which is good. So this is the case when we use one RF chain for uh, the transmitter and the receiver. So as we can see, up to 80 to 100 training frames are enough to estimate the entire channel. And notice that each of these frames is pretty small. So only 16 of length 16, where, where when the training, when the channel tab length is four. So the number of symbols that we are actually transmitting for the number of training symbols that we are actually transmitting is pretty low to get reasonably small uh, estimation errors. And what we can see is that using multiple RF chains of the transmitter and the receiver, this number of training steps can be further reduced. This is because when multiple training steps are used, um, there are more number of effective pre-coding and beam, uh, combining beam patterns that can be generated. And also that we get more measurements per training uh, per training uh, frame transmission because we are multiple RF um, chains of the receiver. Now, these pre previous two plots show the normalized mean square error. And what is really interesting is how does this convert to achievable rates? So here we plot the uh, achievable rate, assuming a fully digital MIMO system, when the channel is perfectly known, that is the dotted lines here line here, and the green and the red curves correspond to the case where the, um, it, it corresponds to the rates given by the estimated channel matrices. So these rates are without water filling, and we show fully digital MIMO rates because it is known that though my fully digital MIMO cannot be supported at millimeter wave, hybrid pre-coding uh, can be used so, uh, with the uh, channel estimates to get near um, ra rates as close as needed to uh, fully digital systems. So again, the key takeaway here is that multiple RF chains reduce the training overheads and the level of uh, error that is incurred is um, small enough so that the achievable rate is as close as needed to the uh, ideal case. So to conclude, uh, we proposed so to conclude, wideband millimeter wave channel estimation has to consider hardware constraints, and it is not a direct, um, straightforward extension from a narrow band system to a frequency selective system. Now, this is because at millimeter wave, using hybrid architecture, the number of baseband measurements is smaller, and uh, the effective baseband channel is less sparse, and conventional techniques to avoid intersymbol interference may not be directly used, so other a signal processing uh, changes also need, may also need to be incorporated during the channel estimation phase as well. And given all these, we propose a time domain approach using under these constraints, wherein we leverage the sparse formulation and used compressive sensing tools to estimate the channel. We showed that multiple RF chains, if it exists, the transfers should be used to minimize the training overhead. And some of the directions for future work include comparing the complexity with a similar model of a frequency domain approach, where the frequency domain approach should also be incorporating the hardware constraints for a, a reasonable and just comparison. And also, it would be interesting to compare the performance between beam training approaches versus the compressive sensing based approaches that uh, we propose here. So these are some of the references that we used for this paper. Any questions? Thank you.